Well, hey everybody. Some would argue that it's that time again. So, pump up your pile cushion, <clears throat> take your medication and get comfortable because uh, I've started work on the 175. Anyway, aside from that, as you, if any of you have watched any of this crap in the past, you'll know that I bought probably the worst 175 I could find. The reason being was because I wanted a 175. Anyway, I bought one. It was bad. I knew it was bad. Um, it hadn't had an easy life. It hadn't been looked after. It hadn't been loved. Poor thing had been neglected. Well, I was wrong. It wasn't neglected. <sighs> it was abuse. No other word for it. You know, sometimes you find things that have been done on a machine and you'll think, well, maybe they couldn't afford to do it properly. What I'm finding on this, it's not a question of they couldn't afford to do it properly. It was they just didn't care. It's this that simple. Now, we know that it's been driven into a wall and the front axle is in a pretty bad way. Uh, one consolation was I know that whoever drove it into that wall um, or a stump or gatepost or whatever, whoever hit something hard with this wheel here, they went over the handlebars and um, I don't feel bad about that at all, to be honest. <laughs> anyway, so the front axle is in a bad condition. If you remember, the guy who owned this also owned a welder. Sadly, he didn't know how to weld at all. Um, he, I mean, look at this kingpin here. Yeah, what, what can you say? Anyway, um, so a lot of bad welding on it. But as I've got further into it, and I have started to dismantle it and... Um, yeah, we could do with a bit of a tidy up in here, I know. I haven't found one single fastener on the whole thing. There is not one fastener that I have removed yet, which hasn't been messed about with in some way. Um, I haven't found a single cotter pin or split pin that hasn't got a bit of wire through it instead. The whole of the linkage, three-point lift, was scrap. Um, everything had welds on it. Uh, well, <laughs> everything had welds. Everything looked like a, a pigeon that lived on a diet of iron filings had perched on it overnight. Um, it was just blobs here and blobs there and bits tacked onto other bits. And it was, it was really, it was unbelievable. Never seen anything quite like it. So all that is scrap. Um, as I've got a bit deeper into it down here, um, I'm just amazed that there's nothing leaking out of the seals on either end of the axle. Now my only explanation for that is that there's nothing in there. Um, it's leaking oil out of every other seal. There was actually an oil level in both of the brake housings um, so it's had no brakes for who knows how long um, the drop um, brackets there to relocate the um, lift arms were missing completely We've got that little bundle of joy there, rendering both the clutch, cross shaft, and that lever worthless. Um, yeah, the pin holding the PTO lever onto that shaft there had been replaced by a 
uh, quarter inch bolt which was nice and sloppy so how they ever managed to engage a gear I get PTO into the gear I don't know because there was enough play on it uh, anyway <laughs> um, on this side again more of the same it's just it's leaking oil out of the seal there has gone it's leaking oil out of everything um, there was also well there would have been an oil level in the clutch housing had the plate been present on the bottom but fortunately it wasn't um, yeah. Rather than tighten up the bolts that hold the steering box on, no, let's just have them so loose. And I would imagine that happened when the driver hit something hard with a front right wheel. Um, let's have the steering box so loose that it does that when it meets a shock. Um, still pondering how we're going to address that one. Some of these bits are reusable, others less so. But surprisingly, the brake levers there are the two of the bits that are actually still in reasonable condition. Normally that clevis pin that goes through there and holds that lever onto the bracket is seized solid into the lever. but. In this case, um, the piece of barbed wire that was there instead of a split pin, um, everything is free and everything moves. That's, that was a, an unusual bonus. The um, diff lock pedal, needless to say, is completely uh, seized up. Dash panel, probably reusable. I don't think there is any part of the steering box which is reusable. Um, clutch pedal, definitely not. Um, that um, brake shaft lever there probably is. Top cover for the uh, gear selectors and levers. There are bolts snapped off in pretty much every hole Stud snapped off into pretty much every hole, so there's going to be an afternoon's work clearing, cleaning that up. Um, surprised inside here, where on the gear teeth so far, and the selectors themselves, doesn't look too bad. Hmm. Anyway. And look at that. Now, is that not... A thing of beauty. Marvellous. Um, I don't know, people who know these things will know that there's uh, something missing here. And that's why that piece of angle has, and I'm not going to say been welded, I'm going to say is kind of loosely stuck to those two brackets there so that the top link rocker could sit there because of what's missing here and what's missing here is missing because the bottom where these two studs should be bolted into the casting is missing on the other side the casting is snapped off there and there so, wasn't expecting that. Even the wheels, which I thought were going to be reusable, aren't. <laughs> I mean, look at that. Marvellous. That's a new type of fastening. I've not seen one of them before. Um, yeah, I'll pop those off sometime and we'll have a look and see if there is indeed anything in the back. I doubt it very much. Um, yeah, nice scabby old bit of, uh, oh, that looks like it's actually a split pin. Excellent. Obviously not the right bolts there. But anyway, how do you set about snapping those two lugs off there? I'm curious. I, I'd love to know. Um, pickup hitch frame. I haven't 
but uh, I'll pop that off at some point soon, take the top cover off here. But um, I dread to think what I'm going to find in, inside the back here. Every new seal, every seal that's possible is going to need to be replaced. Which is good because in this part of the country we have plenty of seals this time of year. Um, yeah, what more can I say? It's, I haven't spent any money on it yet. Um, and that was one of the things I was going to do while working on this thing. Keep a track of what it's going to cost. So that people can get an idea of the actual cost of restoring something like this. Now, apart from the what I paid to get the thing, which is not a lot more than scrap money. All right, it was scrap money. And the cost of getting it here, that's, that's what I'm into it for so far. I'll, I'll publish more details on that later. But anyway, yeah, it's worse than I thought it was. Am I going to continue to do it? Am I going to finish it? Yes, I am. Um, but what I need, because finding 175s is not easy, what I need, I think I've found a casting for um, the differential and the back axle center casting. I think I found one of those. Um, but what I'm looking for now is someone who's breaking either a 175 or a 65 Mark II um, who is willing to sell me some of the front axle parts. If I can't, I've got two choices. I can either fix up what's there, which is probably doable, just time consuming. Um, I can put the later style front casting and front axle on there. That's another option. Or, yeah, if I can find a 65 Mark II being broken or a 175, put the correct front axle back on. Anyway, you tell me what you think I should do. Um, if you think I should... Uh, Drag this back up to the Lake District and push it into a lake where it came from. Um, yeah, that's a valid response. Yeah, let me know what you think. If you got this far, thanks for watching. Bye. Oh, this is a thing of beauty, isn't it? <laughs> I love this thing more every day.